Hello, my name is Erin Olson. I am the Director of Strategic Research for Real-Time Talent. This presentation is a re-recording of a presentation originally given for the Workforce Innovation Board of Ramsey County on October 7th, 2021. Today, I will be highlighting the opportunity occupations that are primed for, uh, for re-employment in Ramsey County. We'll then also identify target occupations for long-term career growth uh, there are 30 of them that we've identified for Ramsey County that are promising target occupations. Next, we'll dig into the five industries for workforce initiative expansion, where many of those target occupations are concentrated. And then finally, we'll uh, lead into a discussion of equitable strategies for expanding workforce opportunities for Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and Asian workers, as well as youth here in our county. So as we dive into this information, I wanted to start by framing it around the labor shortage that we've seen coming for quite some time. Back in those first months of 2020, the workforce story then was really one of talent shortage in the range of, of up to 317,000 workers short of what we would need by 2025. And here in the Twin Cities, seven county metro, we were experiencing a shortage of talent that hit about 62,000 workers already by the second quarter of 2019. The seven county metro alone accounted for just over half of our state's forecasted talent shortage uh, through 2025 at that time. And this is still important today because in the midst of the pandemic, we have seen just how significant that talent shortage truly is. Things have not gotten better. They've gotten significantly worse um, in terms of the talent available to do um, the work that, that is needed by Minnesota's uh, businesses. Uh, we have um, not only an insufficient table, uh, labor pool, not enough eligible workers to maintain our economic growth, but we also have a geographic mismatch of where talent is available to where the opportunities are located. There's also a misalignment between the supply and demand at a skills level. Uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities do not always align between the talent that's readily available to fill the roles that are currently um, in the market. We also have an inefficient labor market. We consistently have uh, disparities in the ability to find and secure and maintain employment when we look at, at outcomes by race and ethnicity, as well as by gender, age, um, and ability as well. Um, there's also, uh, we're seeing significantly low job satisfaction increasing turnover. That's been a trend for many years now, made significantly worse by this pandemic. And employers have, a, have inefficient and ineffective means of finding the talent that they need, uh, whether that's in, uh, through online means, um, in-person means. Uh, a lot of the classic ways that employers have found talent in the past really are uh, not working uh, as, as well as they have in the past. Um, we, it's also important to call out that there is a bit of opportunity here, that we do have um, a local pool of talent that's now available. Um, it's not a positive reason why that talent is available. We have uh, workers that have exited the workforce, greater numbers that have even dropped out of the labor force that have left the workplace and not immediately hoping to return. But this is still an opportunity to, uh, for us to think about um, what are the ways that we can build easier, more direct pathways into high demand living wage careers through reskilling, upskilling, and uh, fostering career advancement for Ramsey County community members who are un underemployed or unemployed currently in um, it, right now in our communities. And so first I want to introduce the concept of um, opportunity occupations. So a great number of the newly unemployed population in Ramsey County are coming out of lower wage occupations. As we begin looking toward economic recovery, it is particularly important to understand the short, mid, and long-term outlooks of these occupations that have been heavily impacted. To do so, I've grouped low demand occupations with high rates of unemployment together in what I'm calling opportunity occupations. These occupations meet the following three criteria. They are low demand, um, um, high unemployment occupations. So um, the three criteria are they have 9% or higher estimated unemployment rates as of the end of 2020. Second, they have forecasted talent surplus through 2023 based on employer demand and kind of a baseline pessimistic forecast compared to the talent pipeline that we anticipate having through uh, local training programs or post-secondary if that's um, relevant. 
Um, and then three, they have low job posting volumes in 2020. In Ramsey County, there were 32 occupations um, at a very detailed level um, with unemployment that was 9% or higher, anticipated talent surpluses year over year over the next three years, and have lower than average local job posting activity in 2020 compared to 2019. So cumulative employment across these opportunity occupations as of the third quarter of 2020 was just over 36,000 people in Ramsey County with um, estimated unemployment rate averaged out across these occupations at just under 13% at that point in time. So they're quite high unemployment, low demand occupations. And the list on the second half of the screen here gives you an idea of those highest volume opportunity occupations with high unemployment and low demand. In the handout that you received for this meeting, uh, these are grouped into clusters of similar occupations, in particular hospitality and tourism, personal care and service workers, and construction trades all experience low demand, high unemployment rates, and high rates of application for unemployment insurance in the first year of the pandemic, a total of just over 27,000 jobs in Ramsey County. The majority of these occupations saw dramatic spikes in unemployment between 2020 Q1 and the third quarter of 2020, aligning with six of the top 20 occupation groups that saw high rates of applications for unemployment insurance in 2020. So, but it's important to also note that about 44% of occupations that have estimated unemployment of 9% or higher did not actually see increased unemployment app insurance application rates since March, 2020. For those particular occupations, employment, unemployment was already high even prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. And these are another 9,000 or so more jobs uh, that are also low demand and high unemployment, but were not necessarily directly impacted by the pandemic. They were already um, high unemployment and lower demand. These were roles like textile furnishing workers, assemblers, grounds maintenance workers, and entertainment careers that have additional other dynamics that were already affecting um, demand and career outlooks in those occupations here in Ramsey County. So when we're prioritizing reskilling and employment strategies, focusing on occupations that were impacted by COVID-19 may aid talent with the most immediate needs due to displacement. Solutions are going to look different for occupations that already had historically higher unemployment rates prior to the pandemic. So one thing just to keep in mind that we don't really have a one size fits all solution for, um, for the challenges that we face today. So next, I'd like to dig into some of the impacts by demographic. Um, so on the second page of the handout you received, you'll see the demographics of individuals in these opportunity occupations and how it compares to what I'm calling our target careers that are high demand and low unemployment, as well as being high wage careers. Looking into the future, the disparate experiences of BIPOC talent during this pandemic will have long-term impacts if we do not aggressively address disparities in career advancement, educational attainment, wage gaps, and occupational segregation. Let's revisit those opportunity occupations I introduced you to a few slides ago. Demographically, as you can um, see here on this, on this chart, a higher share of youth, women, and people of color hold these occupations with significantly high rates of unemployment and forecasted low demand. Talent that recently lost their jobs in these careers should be some of the first targeted for reskilling and reemployment in emerging career paths. On the next slide here, you'll see that um, of those low demand, high unemployment occupations, 37% are low wage, 58% pay a moderate wage, and only 5% are considered high wage. The majority of all talent in low demand, high unemployment occupations in, um, in all um, kind of subgroups of our population that you see here earn a moderate rate, wage, kind of between 30,000 and 60,300. Um, except for young workers between the ages of 16 to 24 years old, of which um, over half, 54%, are making a low wage or under $30,000 per year. And these young workers and talent identifying as female have a higher portion of uh, workers earning a low wage than talent in low demand occupations in Ramsey County overall. So when we think about wage and um, income, um, it's particularly important to um, ensure that strategies um, are really uh, targeted for youth and for women of all uh, race and ethnic backgrounds, of all education levels, 
uh, because we're seeing indications that young people and women um, are more heavily concentrated in those lower wage jobs. And that has big impacts on households. The skill and education level mismatch at a broad scale between the talent that is unemployed today and the occupations in demand tomorrow drives home the imperative of focusing on reskilling and building stronger pathways into post-secondary education. I've already introduced you to the concept of opportunity occupations for those positions that have high unemployment and low demand, which are shown in the red bars on this screen. Here you can see that um, these declining opportunity occupations typically require just short-term or moderate on-the-job training, or at most some previous work experience with no post-secondary degree. The median wage of these occupations collectively was just $35,400 annually, well below a living wage for the average household of three in Ramsey County. Now, I want to also introduce in more detail what I've been calling target occupations. These are those high demand, low unemployment occupations found in Ramsey County. Specifically, target occupations are those positions that um, met this criteria. First, they have unemployment rates at or below 4% as of the third quarter of 2020. And second, are forecasting talent shortages over the next three years. We also looked at occupations seeing higher than typical volumes of job postings in 2020 compared to prior years. Despite the complex and intense impacts of the pandemic on the local economy, some occupations have continued to um, see high demand in Ramsey County throughout 2020. In all, 93 occupations had unemployment rates at just 4% or lower um, as of the third quarter of 2020, um, which is remarkable. Um, and and also anticipate shortage of talent over the next three years. Of these, 28 also saw higher than typical volumes of job postings in 2020 than what they had seen in 2019 and prior. All of the target op opportunities in high demand and low unemployment are also high skill and high wage, which is also worth noting. None of the occupations identified um, even come close to federal poverty rates, and 68 of the occupations um, pay more than the county's average annual wage of $60,300 per year um, in compare for that time frame, um, third quarter of 2020, which we were using as our reference quarter. Uh, the average wage across all of these low unemployment, high shortage occupations is $89,000 per year. Uh, three quarters of them, 75%, require a bachelor's degree or higher typically for to start those roles, which is in stark contrast to the high unemployment occupations that we were previously talking about where only 3% typically require that bachelor's degree or higher. The, this significant gap between the requirements of jobs that are in lower demand and those are in higher demand, again, indicates how critical rapid reskilling and linkages to post-secondary education will be for reemployment into stable careers. The good news is that these target occupations are in high volume here in Ramsey County, and we don't have enough local talent to meet future employer demand in these roles. Many of the high demand, low unemployment occupations are also more highly concentrated in Ramsey County than in a typical county of its size and population. Uh, we've got high, uh, what we call location quotients for many of these occupations. And that means where uh, talent surpluses are existing in lower skill, lower demand occupations, there is room to grow into these high quality jobs that have a future here in our community, that are concentrated here, that employers are really invested in. So now let's, let's dig into those target occupations because this is really important um, to, to explore more, more deeply. In all, as of the third quarter of 2020, we estimate employment in Ramsey County's target occupations to be about 104,250. Um, workers, which is approximately a third of all jobs in Ramsey County. About a third of all jobs uh, with people working in Ramsey County right now are these high skill, high wage, high demand occupations um, that we're considering target occupations for strategy. Um, again, they're highly concentrated, as you can see, in, with a location quotient of 1.2 and an average unemployment rate across all these target occupations of 2.3 six months into the pandemic, which is um, significant. Um, we have a possible shortage um, that was estimated at that time of about uh, 1,533 skilled uh, workers for these target occupations by 2023 in a low growth pessimistic forecast at that time. Um, it's still looking up 
it, when I reran these numbers recently, we're looking around the same range, 1,500 or so talent shortage based on existing talent pipelines compared to what we anticipate that low growth demand to be. Um, and of these 93 target occupations, um, we've narrowed it down actually to about 30 occupations that may be best positioned for reskilling programs based on the following reasons. First, these 30 occupations have related skill sets tied to opportunity occupations that are in low demand and high unemployment right now. So there's great opportunity to leverage skills of individuals who may not currently be looking or working, but are looking for work to move into these um, high demand careers. Second, um, these 30 target occupations um, may be more easily accessible through training and shorter education pathways. Many of these roles are um, occupations where we're starting to see employers get really creative about finding new talent. They're starting to rethink some of the skill and, uh, and education requirements tied to these roles because of how challenging it is to find that talent. And so although a bachelor's degree may have been historically required for these roles, we're starting to see evidence in online job postings among these 30 occupations in, in particular that employers are starting to be pretty flexible with that typical requirement. And then third, these 30 occupations have high wage earning potential. There are multiple ladders, career advancement opportunities that allow an individual to get their foot in the door and grow. And uh, wage goes along with that growth. And so um, we, um, among those 30 target occupations in all, um, there are about 46,000 people in Ramsey County currently in those roles. And half of those positions will need to be replaced with new talent in just a few short years by 2023. So um, really high replacement demand, um, significant growth as well, um, and roles uh, that we're anticipating there not being enough local talent to fill those positions. And so here are those top 30 target occupations that we think might be best suited for talent strategies. Um, again, these represent about 46,000 people currently working in Ramsey County as of the third quarter of last year. Um, again, these have um, related skill sets to those low demand occupations, maybe more accessible through training programs and have high wage earning potential. Um, approaches that help expand access to technology and build digital skills and even obtain in-demand credentials or get credit for prior learning are some of the ways that our workforce system can help connect the newly unemployed with some of the most promising occupations such as these while we recover. So um, before I close things out, um, I'd like to show just one last slide which groups these occupations um, into the um, core industries that they're aligned to. And they're kind of color coded on this slide to give you a sense of, you know, blue being human services, government, um, yellow being those roles in business and finance, which have had a huge boost during the pandemic, uh, red being healthcare, and purple being IT. But, um, but there are many crossover skill sets that tie many of these roles to one another. These five target, um, target um, industries um, contain the majority of those um, 30 target occupations that we just went through here. And I've included construction on this um, slide as well, because in the green construction space, there is massive future growth that cannot be captured by our traditional labor market information. Um, and re real-time talent partnered with Ramsey County Workforce Solutions in July and August to elaborate an extensive report on green construction and the future of that sub-industry in the county. Um, and so I would point to that report for more detail on what those uh, unique target occupations are in construction that we might lift up for strategies. But you can see here just how vast the opportunities really are in that business and finance space uh, from insurance sales to marketing and fin financial management. Um, healthcare, we see technologist and technician roles across the spectrum of healthcare services, having significant needs and being really ripe for greater strategy development. And information technology where, you know, honestly, a computer user support specialist tends to be a pretty popular um, 
kind of entry point or target occupation for, um, for training programs, um, it doesn't quite hit that high wage threshold that we were using to identify these target occupations here. Computer, computer and information systems managers, um, general computer occupations, um, computer and information analyst roles, these are positions in particular that we're seeing that uh, might be uh, ripe for strategy development. And there are a number of uh, groups that are really targeting tech roles in particular to increase diversity, re increase retention, increase career advancement, um, and are looking at some of these occupations as well um, as we speak for the metro area. So um, the next step beyond this would be really to think about how those opportunity occupations that have low demand and high unemployment really uh, map into um, each of these, um, these industries in particular. Um, and that's work that uh, can only truly be done with employer partners, with training partners, um, and, and with, um, with all of those entities that your uh, WIB uh, works alongside. So um, Real-Time Talent's happy to be a partner of Ramsey County and all of the important work that you do. Um, we're, uh, we stand by to help with any additional um, mapping or labor market needs that you may need in the future. Thank you all for your time today. And I hope that this uh, kind of slower look through the slides um, has been beneficial to you. And for those, for those of you that were able to attend on the 7th, hopefully this was a nice refresher for you. Thanks again for, uh, for your time and take care.